Okay, uh, welcome to the monthly meeting, monthly webinar of the Small and Backyard Flocks. My name is Jackie Jacob and I am the coordinator for the e-extension program. And uh, we try to get a webinar once a month. And this month is Safe Egg Handling and Washing by Ken Anderson at North Carolina State University. All yours, Ken. Uh, thank you very much, Jack. It's a pleasure to be with you today to talk about uh, safe egg handling and washing. Okay. The uh, as we get into safe egg handling uh, and quality, we need to talk about what the definition of quality is. And basically, it's the inherent properties of the product which determine its degree of excellence. But more basic than that, it's basically what the consumer wants and is willing to pay for uh, for quality and in that respect it's what the what the egg looks like and what the consumer sees uh, as he looks he or she looks at your product uh, Solomon uh, gave another definition um, related to it's those characteristics of an egg that affect its acceptability to the consumer okay uh, the one thing with quality is we're trying to meet, meet the consumer's desire. And these desires are really based on individual consumer biases. Uh, they have a preference uh, based on their past experiences. So if they pur have purchased eggs from you in the past and they had a good experience based on cleanliness of the product and the quality of the product, uh, they'll probably come back and buy from you again. But bottom line, they want eggs that look clean and they have the perception of being uh, not contaminated and healthy. Because if an egg is dirty, it has the connotation that it's contaminated and that it may be unhealthy to them or their family, okay? Uh, next. Uh, a quality product, uh, there's a lot of reasons for maintaining egg quality. First of all, high quality sells better. Uh, consumers will pay for quality uh, based on their perception and previous experience. Uh, a high quality product uh, maintains its food value. So it has good nutrition and that is maintained uh, in a quality product. Also quality products uh, don't have uh, off flavors or odors associated with them. Uh, and we'll talk about this in a little bit later. Uh, also, a high-quality product, uh, especially in eggs, uh, helps it maintain its functional properties. So if you're making mayonnaise uh, or angel food cakes, uh, the functional properties of those eggs, of a quality egg, come through. Uh, also, a high-quality product prevents the loss from spoilage or, or microbial contamination. Um, and then a... And it, like I always tell even my students, a high quality egg is also a safer egg. Okay, next one. Uh, whenever you talk about quality eggs, you need to talk about uh, biosecurity, which creates a healthy and clean environment uh, for your flock, which contributes to egg cleanliness and safety. Okay. Biosecurity is actually you as a producer understanding uh, the threats to your chicken. Uh, don't let everyone come on and see your chickens because you never know where they may have been. The other key thing is don't mix species. Uh, ducks, geese, turkeys, uh, chickens, etc. carry diseases that uh, don't necessarily affect one but will affect uh, one of the other species. Uh, good management. If you keep things clean for your, in your flock, you're going to have a cleaner egg. And this includes controlling rodents and wild, wild birds. Uh, also, uh, you want to dedicate clothing uh, to uh, your, where you care for your birds. This includes like boots uh, or coveralls that you only wear into your chicken, uh, chicken yard. Uh, security also includes uh, when you go in to buy your feed, you know, uh, and equipment. Don't borrow equipment, but if you have to, 
make sure that you wash it thoroughly and sanitize it uh, as you move forward. Okay. Biosecurity, uh, we know you're proud of your birds. Uh, and, if, and if you've got a nice facilities, uh, you know, it shows. But you need to be cautious with your flock. Don't bring diseases home from purchasing birds at a fair or a poultry auction, flea markets, or even your friends. Um, if you go to these places, wash your clothes, uh, wash yourself thoroughly before you go out to your flock. But if you do bring birds uh, from these areas, make sure you have a quarantine area uh, where you can house them uh, so that you can identify if they're sick. And in this quarantine area, you treat it like a totally separate flock uh, until you know that those birds are healthy and can be integrated into your, uh, into your own flock. Okay, next slide. Uh, egg production, here again, uh, when you're looking at production facilities, whether it's litter, slat, or free range, you just wanna make sure that it's well managed and kept clean, and this will facilitate uh, having clean eggs. Okay, next slide. Uh, when we talk about cage-free facilities, uh, and, and when you talk about any uh, facilities, you want to make sure that the drinkers are there and easily accessible to the bird and that they're functioning properly. Uh, wet litter is not a good thing to have. Uh, the feeders, whether it's a tube feeder or trough feeders, here again, make sure you have enough space and are adequate for the bird. The one thing about keeping eggs clean uh, and unbroken is having the proper uh, nest box uh, to hen ratio. Typically for every five to seven hens, uh, you need to have at least one nest box. Uh, roost space, you wanna make sure you have enough roost space because uh, this eliminates stress on the birds and as does floor space. So one to two square feet per hen uh, in the cage-free uh, systems. Okay, next. Uh, free range, uh, here again, just like in the cage-free, drinkers, feeders. The only thing with free range, you have to consider the outside as well as the inside. So here again, inside the house, you want floor space, you want perches, uh, slat floor, litter floor, whichever may, the case may be. Uh, you wanna make sure there's feeders in the house <clears throat> and then when we move outside, uh, if you're trying to maintain a uh, free range area with forages, uh, it typically uh, takes quite a bit of space, 43 square feet per bird. And even at that, you need to develop a rotation program uh, so that the forage has a time chance to recover and grow. Nest boxes, same thing. Um, and then indoor and outdoor access, uh, you as a producer need to decide whether you're gonna allow the birds to go out uh, day or night, or whether you're gonna lock the birds up at night. Okay, next slide. Uh, coop and nest management. Uh, keep the laying flock in a fenced in area so they cannot hide their eggs uh, or nest anywhere they choose. Uh, what this means is uh, you want to make sure that your nests are in good shape. Uh, you want to make sure that you keep your, your uh, range paddocks mowed off to a reasonable height so that the, the hens will want to use the nests. And also, if they do lay eggs in the floor or on the range, that you're able to find them. Clean the environment. Keep the layer environment clean and dry. Uh, if it rains outside, uh, there's, a pot, there's a good potential that the hens are going to track mud or damp moisture into the house and you'll get damp litter, dirty nesting materials, which will result in dirty eggs. The other thing is to make sure the outside run area, run area has good drainage uh, and, and you don't overgraze it. And that's where the rotation uh, program comes into play. Okay, next slide. Uh, now we get into egg handling. The key thing with egg handling is understanding when eggs are laid. Uh, most of the eggs are actually laid by 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning. Uh, but here again, you need to keep in, in mind that eggs collected in a 
in a timely manner and multiple times per day will prevent uh, egg temperatures from becoming too excessive, especially in hot weather, or it will keep the eggs freezing in cold weather. It also prevents the eggs from being broken uh, by the hen. And in this case, uh, hens may, if they break eggs too much, they may develop the habit of eating the eggs, which is not good for you uh, trying to produce an egg product. The other thing is uh, collecting the eggs uh, frequently actually keeps rats and other predators and snakes away from the hen house uh, because there won't be any eggs there for them to eat. Uh, limit egg breakage uh, from normal traffic. And basically, if you collect your eggs frequently, uh, chickens won't be uh, walking on top of the eggs in the nest trying to get in to lay their eggs uh, in, during the daily egg laying process. The other thing is always make sure that your nest material is clean. Uh, this prevents breakage of the egg, and it also keeps waste or broken egg material away from the eggs that are being laid, which results in cleaner eggs. Uh, the other thing is having good nesting material actually keeps the hens and promotes the eggs to actually, or the hens to actually use the nest uh, and eliminates floor eggs and range eggs. But the other thing is uh, you need, by collecting multiple times a day, you're gonna keep those eggs uh, off the floor as quickly as possible or out of the range as quickly as possible. Okay, next. The, now we get into egg washing. Uh, function of egg washing is very simple. It eliminates eggs that are dirty and it gives you a chance to look for eggs which may have deformed shells and it keeps them out of the marketplace, which means you have good consumer uh, uh, perception. It provides, an eggs with, it provides an egg which is visually pleasing to the consumer. It's clean. It doesn't have any uh, material attached to it. Uh, the clean and also uh, it cleans the shell to minimize the risk of potential microbial contamination. Okay. Here again, cleaning is the major concept is to remove dirt, whether it's a stain or whether it's fecal material. You want a clean egg. Next slide. Uh, when eggs are Okay, so now you're gonna be collecting your eggs and you're gonna bring them in. Okay, when eggs are collected, you wanna refrigerate them, uh, especially if you're not gonna wash them right away. Now, if you're gonna wash them right away, then you'll want to hold them till you wash and then put them in the cooler. But if you're only gonna wash eggs, you know, once a week, you wanna refrigerate them right away. Why? because the internal egg temperature when it's laid is about 105 degrees. And that high temperature, if there is microbial contamination on the surface, uh, it'll grow. You wanna put eggs in a cooler which is at 45 degrees Fahrenheit or less. Now you wanna keep them above freezing. So most people uh, set their refrigerators for eggs somewhere between 40 and 45 degrees. Wash eggs. If you're washing eggs uh, every day, then refrigerate after you wash. If you're washing eggs every two to four days, uh, then you're gonna have them in a, in a cooler, but you're gonna, before you wash them, you need to bring them out and allow them to temper uh, in the room that you're gonna be washing the eggs in for a couple hours uh, prior to washing. And basically, this is so they won't crack when you put them in the hot wash water. Okay, next slide. Uh, eggs being washed uh, directly from the production house. Uh, if you collect eggs daily, uh, here again, uh, the internal egg temperature declines from 104 to 105 within about an hour and a half. So if it's 80 degrees outside uh, in an hour and a half, those eggs are gonna be at about 80 degrees. Um, in the summertime, they may be a little bit warmer. Uh, in the wintertime, they may be a little bit cooler, uh, depending on the outside temperature or the temperature in your production house. Okay, next slide. 
Uh, sanitation of the egg washing area is vital. Uh, if the equipment is not clean or the surfaces are not clean properly, uh, the egg sanitation uh, that happens during washing are actually nullified because you've recontaminated a clean egg. So before processing begins, look at your equipment, look at the counters, look at the, the, the sponges or scrub brushes that you're going to be using to clean your egg and make sure they're clean and sanitized. So your counters, <clears throat> wash tanks, brushes, or clean washed rags uh, that you're going to use to clean those eggs uh, need to be clean and sanitized. Next slide. Okay, to, washing actually assures uh, a cleanliness appearance, and washing is the most effective and simplest method for removing dirt and stains from the, from the egg. Things that affect washing effectiveness. First of all is your knowledge and understanding uh, the process. The wash water temperature, uh, and we'll, we'll get into this in just a minute, whether your wash water temperature is too hot or too cold. Uh, the water characteristics, mineral content of the water. If you have a high mineral content of water, uh, especially iron content, you may need to do something to eliminate or reduce that mineral content. Uh, minerals also uh, affect detergent effectiveness as well as sanitizer effectiveness. And then the pH of your detergent has an impact. And also, what type of washing brushes are you gonna use? Okay, next slide. Which egg washers? Well, the, the best washers to be used, and here again, these will depend on the size of your, uh, how many hens you have or how many chickens you're going to be, or eggs you're going to be processing. But the reality is you really want to use a fresh water washer that does not immerse the eggs in water. However, we know that small flock, uh, you know, people with very small flocks uh, won't need to wash eggs in this way. And they will use some type of immersion washers uh, that are shown um, uh, here. A uh, uh, rocking motion or they bubble air up through the, uh, the washer. Okay, next slide. Uh, washing uh, your egg wash water temperature. In accordance with USDA regulations, your wash water should be at least 90 degrees Fahrenheit or <clears throat> should be at least 20 degrees warmer than the warmest egg. Uh, in, in work that was surveyed across the country, the average wash water temperature for shell eggs is 115 degrees. And this allows basically for 95 degree eggs, which is typical. Uh, which is typically the warmest egg that you're going to see coming in uh, from the chicken house. Understand cleaning actions uh, of your washing devices uh, actually maximizes the cleaning action. And the other thing is wash water should be clean. And if you're washing heavily soiled eggs, you need to change that wash water frequently. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> here again, there's a lot of verbiage here, but the key thing is um, in order, uh, the materials that you use to clean your eggs must be generally recognized as safe uh, by FDA. And the, and the ingredients in those must be substances uh, that are regulated as a food additive by USDA FSIS. And there's a complete list of detergents <clears throat> uh, which will uh, help you remove dirt and kill uh, microbes that may be on the uh, shell surface. And a lot of the egg washers are actually available uh, over the internet at some of these uh, suppliers. Okay, next slide. Okay, egg washing detergents. Uh, for shell eggs, we typically use a very basic or a high pH uh, 
detergent or a detergent that creates a high pH of 10 to 11. Uh, the alkaline detergents that are out there, uh, the most prevalent is a potassium hydroxide detergent. Uh, and these will damage cuticle, but, the, but they don't remove it. Uh, other things that are used as detergents are quaternary ammonium compounds, uh, sodium carbonate, and sodium hydroxide. However, uh, keep in line the arrow, as you move down through these com compounds, you may get more cuticle damage uh, occurring. But no matter what, during washing, a portion of the cuticle may be damaged, uh, which will allow carbon dioxide and moisture to be lost at a more rapid rate. And that's another reason why we refrigerate, uh, because that slows those two processes. Uh, washing, if it's not done properly, can actually uh, create points of access for bacteria. And that's why it's very important <clears throat> that your washing area be clean. Okay, next slide. Uh, <clears throat> if you are an organic or a certified <clears throat> organic egg producer, uh, you have to go by uh, the organic uh, rules uh, adopted by the National Organic Program. <clears throat> and you have to uh, utilize detergents um, for uh, processing and wash washing. And here again, the list of these ingredients are out there. Um, and there are uh, compounds approved that do contain potassium hydroxide, but there are also compounds that contain other uh, compounds as well. Okay, next slide. Uh, here again, there are, uh, be conscious of where your wash water goes as uh, ongoing and excessive use of detergents uh, could actually be harmful to your septic system if that's where your wash water is going. Uh, so be cognizant of what you're doing and use things properly. Um, if you dispose of wash water on the farm, a general so a gentler soap or other material should be used. Uh, some people even have there are enzymes which have been developed uh, which will uh, can be used as egg wash products. Um, here again, the key thing is use them properly and don't use soaps or detergents which are not approved for eggs, which mo means don't use dish soap, don't use laundry soaps, and especially soaps that may contain uh, fresh scents because they can be imparted onto the egg. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Once you've washed the egg, uh, you want to rinse it. Usually the rinse water is a little bit warmer than your wash water and will typically include some type of sanitizer. Uh, chlorine at 100 to 200 parts per million. And here again, getting into the science part of it, uh, the reason the chlorine concentration is so high is because you're using a basic uh, or a high pH wash water. <coughs> Excuse me. And the chlorine is less effective at those high pHs. Uh, quaternary ammonium compounds, they re actually retain their effectiveness in alkaline solution. And, and they have been shown to have a residual sanitizer effect. <clears throat> the key thing is you want to mix them at an equivalent sanitizer level to chlorine. And those are usually included in the directions. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, after you uh, rinse, so rinsing eggs, uh, the eggs are sanitized uh, to reduce microbial load. Uh, Chlorine-based sanitizers uh, uh, can be used. Uh, one rule, uh, like a one tablespoon um, of household chlorine, unscented chlorine bleach will give you uh, uh, basically uh, a 200 parts per million 
uh, chlorine solution. Free chlorine levels, uh, if you're gonna, if you need to check it periodically, you can get chlorine test strips uh, to monitor that level. Uh, and you can get these at restaurant supply stores if you need to. Okay, next slide. Uh, organic, if you're an organic, you have to use compounds that are approved in the NLP program. Uh, chlorine uh, levels less than four ppm uh, are uh, approved. And basically these are limits under the Safe Drinking Water Act. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, commercially, eggs are blown dry under a high velocity. Uh, the key thing for small producers is to allow the eggs to dry as quickly as possible. <clears throat> uh, blowing, uh, are you gonna be able to blow air uh, to blow the water off? Probably not. But if you put the eggs in a tray, uh, in a drying tray, uh, and you blow air, uh, warm air across, uh, or air across them, uh, they will dry fairly quick. And keep in mind that the humidity uh, and air temperature will have an effect on uh, how eggs dry. Warm air dries eggs faster. Uh, warm water evaporates faster. So those are some things you can keep in mind as you dry your eggs. Okay, next slide. Uh, drying the eggs quickly prevents microbial contamination. <clears throat> if you can help it, don't towel dry your eggs. Place them on a drying rack and blow air across them. And why? Because eggs coming from the wash, uh, washer, uh, the contents near the surface of the shell are warmer and you want to get that moisture to evaporate as quickly as possible <clears throat> before the egg comes. contents that attribute uh, to microbial contamination. Although this is still under debate because of some of the differences uh, from the original studies that were done in 1968. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, you want to candle, uh, weigh, and package. Candle, uh, uh, eggs sold directly from the farm uh, for very small producers. These processes are optional. And here again, it really depends on your state egg laws. In North Carolina, if you put a sign out in front of your uh, farm uh, and you say large eggs, you have to indicate a price. And not only that, then you have to candle the eggs and you have to uh, wash them. That's North Carolina law. Other, law uh, other states may have different regulations. But candling the egg. Candling <clears throat> actually provides your consumers a higher quality product. Why? Because you're able to remove cracks, bloods, and dirts more easily. Uh, the candlers, you can purchase a candler uh, and they'll range in price from, uh, you know, 50 to $400, depending on how fancy you get. But you can actually make a candler, or you can use a high intensity LED flashlight. But no matter what, you wanna candle your eggs in a dark room to make it effective. Okay, next slide. Uh, eggs sold directly from the farm. Uh, here again, depending on your state, uh, they're exempt from all of this. Egg weights. <clears throat> it's fairly easy to sort uh, eggs by size, uh, and it actually lets the consumer know what they're buying. Are they buying a bunch of large eggs? Are they buying a mixed group? And, and you can sell them as mixed size. Uh, place, once you've, you've washed the eggs, once you've candled the eggs, you want to put them in a carton. The carton does two things. It protects the eggs uh, from being broken, and it also keeps them clean. <clears throat> it actually does one other thing, and it actually 
if the eggs are cool when they go into the carton, it actually helps keep them cool. I personally don't recommend reusing cartons uh, unless because you don't know where those cartons were or what is on the surface of that carton. However, you can wash foam cartons <clears throat> and sanitize them and then you, they could be reused in that case. Once you get the eggs in the carton, refrigerate them 45 degrees or below. Uh, down to 40 degrees. Okay, next slide. Uh, once the eggs are processed, uh, some things to understand. While you wash your eggs, the egg temperature is going to increase. So you want to cool them as quickly as possible afterward. And then here again, <coughs> according to USDA, eggs need to be stored at or below 45 degrees. And then handle eggs carefully because they will break. Next slide. Uh, other things that influence quality decline in eggs. The production house. Uh, how clean is it? Do you, are you able to regulate the temperature inside through ventilation? Uh, processing temperatures. How hot is your wash water? Packaging. Um, you know, are you using uh, are you using good packaging material or are you using packaging material at all? Uh, storage temperatures. Uh, if you're taking these eggs to a farmer's market to be sold, uh, how do you deliver them to the farmer's market? Temperature conditions can slow moisture and carbon dioxide loss. They keep microbial populations from growing and they help keep the air cell small and maintain thick albumin. And they keep the yolk round and firm. Next slide. Uh, egg quality. There are a number of egg quality components that are found naturally. And these help maintain microbial quality, functional quality, and organoleptic qualities. And organoleptic simply means what they look like, what they taste like, and what they smell like. So next slide. Uh, some of these microbial uh, quality component uh, uh, prevention. Cuticle. It covers the shell when the egg is first laid. Uh, it's a chemical and physical barrier to the bacteria, and it lasts. This antimicrobial quality lasts for about 96 hours. But you have to keep in mind that the cuticle dries, it cracks, and it's and it does flake off, uh, and it is damaged during the washing process. Next slide. Microbial quality, uh, shell. The shell's main function is to keep all the parts of the egg together. But it also creates a physical barrier to the movement of bacteria through the egg. And for, about, and for millions of years, uh, it's help the, the chicken reproduce itself. But you gotta keep in mind, the shell contains pores. And it will crack if it's hit on something hard, or if it hits something hard. Okay, next, next slide. Uh, the next barrier <clears throat> is, are the shell membranes. And there's an outer shell membrane and an inner shell membrane. And these are effective barriers, barriers to microbial penetration. Uh, the protein strands, as shown here in this picture, uh, are basically look, kind of look like a screen and they function like a micron filter. Next slide. Uh, if something were to get through the, the, the cuticle, the shell and the membranes, it runs into the chemical barriers that are pre present in the egg white. And these are the conalbumin, uh, which actually binds iron and prevents bacteria from using it. Uh, lysozyme, which causes the bacterial cell wall to lyse or break down. <clears throat> Ovomucin, which inhibits hemagglutination in bacteria. Avidin, which binds biotin and allows uh, and makes it unavailable for bacteria. 
and then the ovomucoid, which actually inhibits trypsin availability to bacteria. So there's a lot of chemical barriers which prevent uh, and inhibit uh, contamination of eggs. Next slide. And then the final barrier to prevent that bacteria from getting into the yolk is the vitellum membrane. And this contains the yolk, but it also provides a small barrier. Okay, next slide. Uh, the one thing that we're doing for quality is we want to maintain the functional quality. So washing, refrigeration, and handling helps maintain these functional qualities, such as leavening. So if you're making breads or cakes, eggs act as a leavening agent. Binding, if you're making meatloaf, a lot of times you'll crack an egg into it, mix it in with the meat, and it binds the meat together so you get a nice consistent meatloaf. If you're making <clears throat> Custards, uh, puddings, um, uh, ice creams, uh, thickening agent. A smoothing agent gives frostings its proper texture. Uh, emulsifiers, if you're making salad dressings, mayonnaise and Miracle Whip salad dressing. If you're a winemaker, uh, egg whites are actually a clarifying agent for wine. Uh, also, the yolks add color if you like to make uh, egg noodles, and they add texture to pastas. <clears throat> and they can actually be used as glue uh, when you're making food products. Uh, you know how sticky albumin can get as a dry. Next slide. The functional quality has to do with the many way eggs are involved in food preparation, the refrigeration, humidity, and CO2 all play an impact uh, on functional quality <clears throat> and refrigeration helps maintain a high quality product. Next slide. Uh, yolk and the albumin contribute functional and aesthetic properties to food and it's very important that we maintain that quality. Next slide. Then we get to the organoleptic quality and these are the aesthetic properties of the egg that the consumer evaluates and values. And this is what they can see. Dirts, stains, cracks. Odors, they can smell it. Uh, have the egg carton or have the eggs been stored in areas where they take on odors. <clears throat> and then taste. Eggs actually acquire tastes and flavors from things that are stored around them. And we need to maintain a good uh, storage environment to eliminate those things. Next slide. So albumin and yolk will take up flavors of surrounding food items. They should be stored away from things with strong aromas, such as fish, onions, or other products with strong ar aromas. Eggs should not be stored with freshly dug potatoes or other ripening fruits, such as apples, uh, and then you definitely want to keep them away from an environment where petroleum-based cleaners or solvents, basically compounds which have a lot of volatiles, <clears throat> you don't want to store eggs anywhere near those components. 